Okay. The pain is gone? Touch. Yes? <laughs> Very good touch. Yes. So, teşekkür Isa. Teşekkür Isa. İsa'ya teşekkür et diyor bebi. Teşekkür İsa. Yeah. <laughs> This is the best <laughs> onyx shop. Wow. Look at that. If you ever come to Turkey, come here. <laughs> I'm telling you, the cups are so beautiful and it's all good for your health. <laughs> Hi friends, I hope you're having a wonderful day today. We are so blessed to have the Lord Jesus, the pearl of great price. Also, please excuse my hair. As you've noticed in my previous videos, I've given up on trying to straighten and tame my hair. This is how it is naturally. Okay, back to the video. I just wanted to share a healing situation that happened in Turkey. Tom and I were traveling fairly recently. We were visiting the seven churches in the book of Revelation in Turkey. We were on a private tour. It was just the two of us. And we had a tour guide and he would take us to visit some villages to meet the experts in these crafts and trades, family businesses handed down through the generations. And it was brilliant to see this and to see their livelihood and how much respect that they had for their business. We were taken to a Onyx factory, the most exquisite Onyx products, cups, plates, vases, art pieces, we saw them all. Almost anything you can imagine that can be carved out of onyx, they had it. And usually, Tom and I don't buy souvenirs, but we felt good about it and we decided to buy a pair of goblets. And I'm going to show you the goblets. These are the beautiful. Look how wonderful they are. They're so beautiful, these goblets. Apparently drinking out of it is very good for your bones, for your health in general. Also, it's a stone that has biblical meaning. Exodus 28 explains how two onyx stones were fixed in settings of gold on the high priest's shoulders. So there was one on the right and one on the left. The onyx stone, therefore, signifies God's government because we see in the book of Isaiah that the government was on his shoulders. Anyway, back to the situation. Tom and I were paying for our goblets when I felt the power of God for the lady behind the cash register and I asked her if she had any pain in her body. So she didn't know English very well, but our tour guide translated. She did have pain. She had pain in her back. And this is very interesting because the back, you could say it's linked to the shoulders and the onyx has a biblical association with the shoulders. So I prayed for her. Instantly, the pain went away. It was so quick. You know, no matter how many healing situations you get involved in, it's always thrilling. It's always exciting. You could actually see with this lady, you could see the pain leave her face. When we got there to the cash register and we first saw her, I saw this stress and this heaviness etched on her face. It was very visible. And all it took was a simple prayer. A short, brief moment and this heavy burden left her. A lightness took over and it left us all laughing. Because when the Lord is at work, the joy of the Lord is released in the atmosphere. And she just brightened up and I actually got her to say Teshakur Isa, which means thank you. Teshakur is thank you. Isa is Jesus. And they were willing to do that. I like to make them utter this because this utterance is a powerful symbolic act when you verbally declare gratitude to Jesus. Now they were all Muslim and Jesus loves to heal Muslims. He loves to heal Buddhists, Hindus, any faith, any spirituality. He gave his life to ease the burdens of all mankind. So don't be afraid to pray for Muslims when you're in a Muslim country because the Lord will indeed open up divine appointments everywhere. And in Islam, Jesus is known as Isa and he's regarded as a prophet. In Islam, he's recognized for his healing miracles. So there's no law against 
praying for a Muslim, praying for a Muslim to be healed, to be relieved of pain, to be stronger. No one will stop you from doing that. And sometimes that's all you need for this healing to be the sign for this person to begin to contemplate the Lord. In fact, Tom and I have actually found it very enjoyable to pray for Muslims because they're very res responsive to signs. And when we use the name Isa, a name that they're comfortable with, it's familiar to them and they are usually very happy to then receive prayer. It just goes to show that wherever you are, we have to remain sensitive to the leading of the Holy Spirit. So let's pray for this woman. She was so sweet. I pray that this will indeed be a sign for her to recognize that it was the Lord Jesus who came to her rescue. And I pray that many, many more signs and people will come her way to share the gospel with her, who can share the gospel in Turkish and share that he died for our sins and he took every burden, every stress, every Every worry, anxiety, all pain was placed upon his shoulders so that we don't have to carry it. And I pray that this woman, the tour guide, and all those working in the Onyx factory, that they will have eyes to see and ears to hear. Lord, open all their hearts, soften them, Lord, so they can fully receive their Messiah. In the name of Yeshua, I pray. Amen.